Okay, here we go. We are back. I've lost track of the number of chapters, but here is Anna's chapter. Here we go. I didn't say much in school, and I never raised my hand. That would have been an easy way for people to notice me, and I didn't want to be noticed. People can be real mean. That's something mom warned me about, and my mom knows, trust me. I didn't have any close friends, and I wasn't looking for any. Mom was my best friend. Not getting noticed was never a problem for me before. I was always quiet and behaved, so the teachers left me alone. I kept my head down and looked at the floor a lot, but I'm a good observer. Mrs. Williams, our principal, winks whenever there's a big surprise coming. It's something I noticed a few weeks ago. If you keep quiet, you have time to look and listen and take things in. At the beginning of the year, the first thing you pay attention to is the classroom. We had a nice room, a big one. There's a whole wall of windows opposite the door. Mr. Turup's desk was in the corner by those windows. The students' desks were arranged in five tables of four. So right away, I knew we had a teacher who was into teamwork and who probably didn't mind a little talking. Otherwise, we would have been in old-fashioned rows. The front of the room had, had the blackboard and the back wall had the whiteboard. The last side of the room had all our cabinets and a sink, plus a drinking fountain. Most of the room was carpeted, except for the side by the sink and fountain. Our door was next to the fountain. The other thing, the bigger thing you pay attention to in the beginning is your teacher, especially if he's new like Mr. Turup. Right away I could tell he was a reader because there were books everywhere in our room. Mom liked that when I told her. Mom's a library assistant in another school. It's a good job. She has the same schedule I do and it allows her to take some classes at night. She's studying art, something she missed out on when she was younger. She's really good at drawing and painting. Mr. Turup was young and athletic looking. He didn't have any pictures around his desk and he didn't wear a wedding ring. Miss Newberry from across the hall didn't have a wedding ring either. Neither did mom. Mr. Turup turned out to be different. He noticed me on the first day. It didn't matter that I wasn't raising my hand because he would say, Anna, get ready, I'm calling on you next. Or if we were talking about something and there wasn't just one option, he would say, Anna, what do you think? He wasn't going to let me hide all year. This made me nervous, but it turned out to be a good thing in the end. All right, that's the end of Anna's chapter. Let's see. And we are back at square one with Peter. So if you remember, Peter is the troublemaker. So we will find out what he's into next. All right, I never had something in school to excite me before, but the plant, but the plant, you, but the, the plant unit we did with Mr. T had me fired up. We grew these bean plants from a seed, and once they got big enough, we started doing different tests with them. Variables, Mr. T called them. First, we stuffed the plants in boxes with just a little tiny hole in the side, and we waited to see what the plants would do after a few days in the dark. Anna had a meltdown about it. I don't want to put mine in a box, she cried. Mr. T had to take her out in the hall to calm her down. I was kind of shocked. Usually she doesn't say anything. What a weirdo, I thought. It's no wonder she doesn't have any friends. It's a good thing Danielle was her partner. She's the patient kind. Anyone would have been fuming. My partner was Lexi, which was fine. She let me do what I wanted. Next, we put the plants on their sides on their side to see how they would grow. I couldn't believe it. The plants bent and still grew upwards toward the ceiling. That was pretty cool. But the best part was what we got to do in the end. Mr. T let us feed our plant any concoction we wanted to over the course of the week. There was just one rule. We couldn't use any ingredient that would spoil and stink up the classroom, like milk or something that wasn't good for us to breathe, like gas. There were some pretty wild concoctions. David and Nick used salad dressing because according to them, plants make salad, so the plant will like salad dressing. Brenda and Heather used orange juice mixed with ketchup and Pepto-Bismol. I don't know what they were thinking. Mine was the best though. I brought in, I brought in cat litter, used, soda and a little maple syrup. I did my best to mix it together and feed it to my plant. Lexi wasn't real happy about my choice of ingredients. I didn't tell her I had peed in the soda bottle, in my soda bottle some too. <laughs> Peter, you moron, that stuff is gonna kill our plant, she whined. Shut up, you never cared about the plant before, I said. Well, I care now, she said. Lexi, maple syrup comes from trees. I drink soda a lot and I'm growing and farmers put animal manure on their fields all the time. So zip it, it's going to work. Our plant was dead in two days. Danielle and Anna did the, did the best. Danielle used some natural ingredients her grandmother had taught her about. Something the old time farmers 
really did use, I guess. Danielle lives on a farm, so she had a big advantage. Her concoction worked big time. She and Anna were the only ones to come up with a food that the plant liked. Anna was all smiles until Lexi said, like, you're just lucky Danielle was your partner. She did everything. Then Lexi turned to me and added, even if she's fat. I don't think anyone else heard, but I laughed. I know I probably shouldn't have. Anna's smile disappeared and she stared at the floor. Poor old Luke sure tr poor old Luke sure tried. I think he put too much brain power in it, and he's got a lot of brain power. He's been the smartest kid in school since kindergarten. His partner was Jeffrey, but he never does anything. Remember, Jeffrey is the one who had a really short half a page chapter who said he didn't like school and he wasn't good at it. He just lets Luke take charge. Maybe he should have helped. I brought in a number of different ingredients, Luke said, and they'll interact perfectly because the electron balance and resulting the electron balance and resulting bond formations. He even said something about a periodic table or some crazy thing. Well, you're never going to believe this, but Luke mixed his junk together and it started smoking. The next thing we knew, the stupid farm fire alarm was going off. The whole school had to go outside and even the fire department showed up. It was great. Mr. T had to do some explaining and after a while we were let back inside, but Luke wasn't performing any more exper experiments for us. Man, things were just so fun with Mr. T. All right, we will be back next time with Luke's chapter. Bye.